You know, guys, with the 2022 Pittsburgh Steelers NFL season just right around the corner, it's going to be an interesting season coming up for sure. With it being a new era, a new team, a new time for Pittsburgh Steelers football. There's going to be a lot of players. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to have an increased number of snaps that are going to be getting a bigger responsibility for this new and fresh Pittsburgh Steelers team. And we're going to discuss just a number of guys on who could very well take the next step for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, who who could have the biggest jump for the 2022 season for the Pittsburgh Steelers? We have a few names listed here. Now, the majority of these names are guys that are coming into their second or third years. And Najee is not going to be included only because we all we already know the type of the dependability, the type of responsibility this guy's already going to going to hone in his second year. I mean, he's already the heart and soul of this offense. Right. So, so we already know how big of a role he's going to have. We already know what type of player he is. So that's the reason why he's not included in this list. But one guy that absolutely is, is Pat Frymuth. And the reason why I put Pat Frymuth is because I do believe his role is going to be increased as he will be the full-time starting tight end in his second year. And I'm excited to see what he can do in his second year. Already getting his feet wet last year. But we lost a few key guys. Uh, in, in, in free agency at the receiver position. Now, we replace him via the draft, which I think could be even better than the guys we had before. However, I think to get their feet wet and not necessarily rush those guys into uh, an immediate role, I think Frymuth could see an increased number of snaps and targets. Fingers crossed because he is that guy, believe me. And he showcased that in his rookie season. He had, what, seven touchdowns for yeah. a rookie tight end for yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers? And, and, and a pretty poor offense at that, too. So imagine what this guy could do if, if everything goes right for the offense and this offense is truly revived. So I'm excited to see what Frymuth can do in his second year and hopefully with an increased number of, of targets, which he absolutely deserves, which he absolutely needs because it seemed like any time we got the ball to Frymuth, good things happen. And good things did happen. I mean, coming out of college, coming out of Penn State, he had that nickname of Baby Grunk. I don't right. know if I, I don't know if I would go that far no. cuz Rob Gronkowski is some some different. But but Frymuth is his own guy, man, and he's proven it already. He's coming to a second year. I'm excited what he can do. He's definitely going to have a bigger role. I hope he makes the biggest jump though because he has that potential. It's just a matter if he can stay healthy cuz last year he did have a few concussions which it does worry me long term for him. Yes, it does. It really does. But I think this guy can absolutely be a, a game changer for this offense if he already isn't. Oh, definitely, no doubt. He showed just a little bit of what he could really do in the NFL last year as a rookie. Right. And it's, I'm I'm really, really excited to see what he can do for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the second year. Right. And speaking of guys that did a, a great number of impact in their rookie year, Chase Claypool. We all know what he did in his rookie year. It gave us great promise. However, last year, I don't want to say it was a sophomore slump, but in a way, it kind of was because he didn't live up to the potential. He didn't make that big jump like we all anticipated. That's why we put him in this list. Can he make a jump from last year? Yeah, because in his rookie season, we know how he was. He had that impact. He had 11 total touchdowns, nine receiving, two rushing. Last year, he only had two total touchdowns, if, if I remember correctly. Right. And now, granted, that wasn't entirely his fault. He is he is a little clumsy. He's a little uh, still a little... Uh, rough around the edges in terms of an outside receiver, which for his stature, you expect someone of that athleticism to have a little bit more smoothness is the, is the word I'm going to go with here. But at the same time, the quarterback play was also a little iffy on his part, and he didn't he wasn't really put in positions where he couldn't make big plays, where he couldn't show himself as big play clay, which we like to call him nowadays. Now, in his third year, Fingers crossed, and I'm just going to assume. I, I don't think there's been any clarification. This is just my assumption. He's going to be the new slot guy. He's going to be moved to the slot, which if you saw last year, if you paid attention, his two best games he had last year, which each of them had 100 yards, where was he? He was in the slot. Yeah. That Broncos game that took Juju out, Claypool was inserted in the slot over 100 yards and one of his two touchdowns. Yep. This guy is a, a a game wrecker when it comes to the slot, man. That's where his role is going to fit best at, at this stage of his game right now, especially with Pickens being moved outside opposite of Deontay. Yes, of course. It just opens the offense up a lot. So can Claypool make a big jump from 2021 into 2022, along with Frymuth? If he were to be inserted into the slot, I really hope so, because although he has the size and the potential to be an outside guy, 
like you said, he's still a little rough around the edges. Right. You know, he's still got some rawness left to him. Now, he's still young. He can still work on that. But I feel like he can definitely get better at, at what he needs to get better at. Right. <clears throat> excuse me, if he's in the slot. That's a complete mismatch. He's speedy. He's got decent hands. And that size is just, it's, it's, it's filthy, man. Like I said, it's a, it's a mismatch. And you got Deontay and more than likely George Pickens outside. You put Claypool in the slot. I mean, that's that's basically uncoverable right there. I would imagine uh, uh, Claypool's going to be moved to the slot because who, who else is? You're not going to put Pickens in the slot. You're absolutely not putting Deontay in the slot because he's already a great X receiver. Yes. Yeah, De- Deontay showcased that. Chase, he still needs to showcase a few things here and there, and he can definitely do that in the slot because that's where he fits best, and that's where he's going to shine. I, I totally just, believe it's that. It's just going to benefit the offense so much when you have those three guys lined up like we stated with Frymuth at tight end, man. The offense is going to be so lit up. If everything goes according to plan, man, I'm getting excited thinking about and it. If Matt it's Kanda, so young and if it's Matt, so fresh. And if Matt Kanda puts the players where they need to be to succeed. Yeah, Claypool, man, can he make a big jump after uh, a pretty uh, rough sophomore year? I hope so. And speaking of a rough rookie season, uh, left tackle Dan Moore is another guy we're going to talk about here. I wouldn't exactly say it was a rough rookie year. I, I would say so because he wasn't supposed to be the projected you know, starting You're tackle right. this early. You You're know, right. Saying he was a fourth-round pick, and we had Chucks at left tackle yes. and ideally Zach Banner That's right. at right tackle. But Banner never fully recovered from that torn ACL two years ago. So and he barely played last so year. So Chucks had to move back to right tackle, and we we had no choice. We had to get Dan Moore at left tackle. There was no other choice. So that's why I say it was kind of rough. And especially early on, Dan Moore, you know, he was basically getting his feet wet right. in the NFL. Knowing this year he's going to be the starting left tackle, in my opinion, he'll have that preparation mentally. He should be prepared more. And he, I, I got to say this about Dan Moore, man. As the season progressed, you could you could see he definitely got better. Yeah, you definitely he, saw you saw growth, and with a year under his belt, and him uh, projected to be the long term left tackle for the Steelers, I think Dan Moore could really have a big big you know leap year for the Steelers. I absolutely hope so because the tackle position is incredibly important in the NFL nowadays, especially when it comes to an offense and. And, and Trubisky slash Pickett, whoever the quarterback's going to be, they're blindside. And that's Dan Moore. He's going to have a big responsibility, and hopefully he has that big jump heading into his second year, where last year Rob says it was rough, which I kind of agree, but he got better, and he's just getting warmed up. But now he has that preparation where he's like, hey, I'm actually going to be the starter now. I understand that. I understand I got to get better at this and that. Let's go. Yeah. And I remember Big Ben, just uh, right before his retirement, actually, he said that he believes Dan Moore could be the long-term Steelers left tackle. I absolutely agree. And I think Dan Moore does showcase that potential. He just got to work on the mechanics and stuff like that, and even having another offensive line coach under his wing. Right. Maybe that helps. I don't know. We'll see how he does. But I would hope so, and hopefully this one actually stays longer than the, the full season. But I do have high hopes for Dan Moore. I think he could really be something for the Steelers. Yeah, definitely. Now we go from offense to defense. Alex Highsmith. Now, this is a little uh, iffy name to put on this this list because we already knew he had that responsibility last year. And that's what this video is about. It's about guys that are going to jump from 2021 into 2022, but it's more so also about guys where their roles are going to be bigger than the previous year. Right. Alex Highsmith already had that big role last year and had what I believe it was seven sacks, seven, eight sacks last year. But, but the majority of them actually coming to the later part of the season. Right. Where he really stepped up big time. Exactly. So the reason why I put Highsmith in here is because he's definitely going to be dependent on a little bit more in the pass rush aspect. This year, in his third year, in his second year as a full-time starter opposite TJ Watt, hopefully he makes a big jump because Highsmith, man, has that double-digit sack ability. He definitely does. I thought he was going to have it last year. Unfortunately, he didn't. I definitely think he can do it this year. I think him and TJ are just starting to show that that potential of what type of duo they can be. They did it last year, and the chemistry is growing, honestly. And imagine what that can do for this this defense, which on paper next year is already looking great. It's looking very scary, and it's going to be, I think, a lot more beneficial for sure. I think they can just feed off each other and absolutely just just they complement each other so well already. Just imagine what what's going to happen now with Highsmith stepping up into his third year, second year as a full time starter. Yeah, and just just wreak havoc and just. Make quarterbacks piss their pants. Exactly. I think that that's dangerous, and that's a great thing to, to think about for Steelers fans. Now, finally, guys, another guy that's definitely going to have to make a jump this year because he's going to be leaned on a lot because he's he's showing that, that dedication because this guy has gained 30 pounds since last year. Yeah. 
He came in pretty raw, pretty skinny for his position last year, and now he's he's absolutely showing that hey, I can step it up. I I can. I, I can play where they need me to play. Especially with what happened with Tua, with him retiring. This is his 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 time to really showcase and, and grab the brass ring and take this opportunity to the next level. And that guy we're talking about is obviously Isaiah Loudermilk, the milkman. This guy, you know, when, when he was drafted, the coaches and the staff around him were saying, he reminds me of a young Cam Hayward. Which is crazy because I remember when we, we actually – Traded up yes. to get this guy, although he was a projected undrafted free agent. But right. we tr- we trade up in the fifth to grab this guy for not only depth purposes, but for a project yes. under our defensive line coach, Carl Dunbar. Right, and very similar to Dan Moore, man, his role was, was he was thrown into his role very immediate and a lot faster than I think anyone anticipated due to injuries. Yes. And thus, Loudermilk will continue and remain as a rotational piece like it was last year, only obviously a lot more... Uh, uh, progressed and and more uh, 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 marinated, I suppose. Yeah, uh, coming into his second year now, and honestly, man, it, it's crazy to, to see how some of these guys, especially last year, guys like Dan Moore, guys like Isaiah Loudmilk, they're thrown into their roles a lot sooner than they should be, honestly. But they just go with the flow and they get better week by week, mm-hmm. and, and, and and it showed. Loudmilk was actually one of the few bright spots of that horrible defensive line last year. Yeah, especially when it came to the run-stopping ability, he was actually one of the better ones in his limited playing time for the Steelers. Right, so Loudermilk's definitely going to have to step up as a rotational piece, potentially as a fill-in starter, whether that's due to injury or performance, whatever. Anything could happen. But Loudermilk, I would hope, makes a big jump in the second year because everyone's behind this guy. The Steelers staff are definitely behind this guy. They trade up to get him. They 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 gave him high praise, thinking he's a young Cam Hayward. So he, he he's got a lot... Going for him. Let's just hope he actually steps up to the plate, but yeah. we shall see. But anyway, guys, uh, we're going to even add an honorable mention. Trey Norwood. He's coming to a second year. The only reason why we don't put him in the full-fledged list is because we don't know what his role is going to be this year. Because our secondary is actually pretty stacked. Yeah, for, for the first time and I actually say in a while. Right, because Levi Wallace, Akella Willispoon are starting outside guys. You have Cameron Sutton moving to the slot, I'm assuming. You have Arthur Millette. Carl Joseph and DeMonte Casey as your dime guys. I don't know where Norwood fits in. He's going to have to fight for for, for, for a spot yeah. uh, to get on the field. Honestly, I think he'll make the 53. I just don't know if he'll see time on the field. He'll definitely play special teams. That's where he's really good at. But I like to see him on the field. I just don't know how immediate that's going to be in the second year. Right, of course. But I'll put him as, as an honorable role because I think he could definitely showcase that continued potential he showed late last year in his second year if he's getting the opportunity. It's just it's gonna hard it's kinda hard to see it now with how stacked it is, but we'll see. Anyway guys, that is that is the video, man. Give us you guys' thoughts down below. If we missed any names you guys want to include, definitely put them down below. Love to have a few discussions, man. Otherwise see you guys in the next one. Here we go, Steelers. And like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace!